I'm so happy to be sharing the word of God with you today. First of all, I want to thank Sister Bev and Sister Prina. When they sing the songs, you know, they sing from the heart. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you, Brenda, Sister Brenda, for taking out the scripture reading today. God bless you too. Um, I know Preston Church is very good at welcoming people. It's unfortunate that we are having a Preston Zoom Church. But when we used to go into, into the building, you would actually feel that you are at home, you are part of the family, but I still see that you can feel at home and you are part of the family. I know you've been welcomed by Elder Robert Lutaya, but I still extend my warm welcome to you. And I am excited today because I see um, some of our dear ones who sometimes you don't usually um, worship with them, because of difficulties getting into the Zoom or because they can visit home. Like uh, Lily, Lily uh, is my best friend. She visits um, Brazil every Sabbath and she listens to the sermons in her own mother language. I'm so excited to see Sister Florette today. And I think uh, all of us were excited to see Sister Florette today. And I, I, I can just say praise God because um, for her to join us today, God, God is great. God is great. I am so excited as well. I see my, my children today. I saw Tim and uh, I saw my daughters, Nomsa and Dee. I'm so excited to see you just to come to listen to the word of God. And uh, I am so happy because you spared your time to come and listen to the word of God. Also, I saw someone called Chengeta Chiroza, and Chengeta Chiro, Chengeta Chiroza. I know that name. That name comes from where I come from. I may not know you exactly, but I just want to thank you for joining us in the service for today. I also want to, to welcome all the visitors. I might miss some, but um, you know what? This is what the human mind is like, but God will never miss you. <laughs> if he's coming with blessings today, he will give you equally the same. So I want to thank you all who have joined us uh, together with my church family, my mother's here, my father's here, my brothers and sisters, my children. God bless you all. I also saw my sister-in-law. You know, my sister-in-law, she visited us uh, uh, um, uh, at one point when Jabu was preaching. And today she heard that I am also preaching. She, she has visited us. You know what? I give great honor to you, my sister-in-law, for attending our um, church services today. And I pray that God will bless you equally the same. Let us pray. Father God, what a blessing to be found in your presence today. We would love to have someone to be somewhere else, but your Holy Spirit has persuaded us to come before your grace, before your throne of grace, to listen to your word. Please, Lord, help us to understand fully what you want us to understand. Help me, Lord, to explain your word the way you would love your people to hear. May the words that will come through my mouth be your words that will be rich, and full of blessing to your people. And when we finish this service, may we say it was good to be here. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen. This uh, today is a day of prayer and fasting and I have entitled um, my sermon, the title which says, who are the overcomers? Who are the overcomers? So as I said, today is our day of prayer and fasting and you've been hearing this since we started the program. So what is your reaction when you hear the word prayer? Or what comes into your mind when you hear the word fasting? Well, what comes into your mind when you hear both of those words combined together, prayer and fasting? Well, my mind goes quickly to the incidents in the Bible where people prayed and God showed up. 
in the Bible where people prayed and God answered their prayers. Today, we can have the same experience on our day of prayer and fasting. Our God may decide to show up. Who are the overcomers? Who are the overcomers? My dear friends, first of all, let me tell you what I understand about heaven. Let me tell you something about heaven. Heaven is an awesome place. I might try to describe it for you, but of course it is not possible for human thoughts and realities to come close to the greatness of heaven. The Bible says, the eye has not seen, no ear heard, no have entered into the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for those who love him. That's 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9. It's in the Bible. We will never come to understand until we get there. Revelation 21 tells us of heaven's capital city, the new Jerusalem. That's its name. And then um, of a recreated earth. But the new Jerusalem is also beyond adequate comprehension. You cannot describe it. Though we are given a pen picture of what the city will be like in Revelation chapter 21. In that same chapter, Jesus describes who will enter heaven and who have a home in that glorious city. He says, he who overcomes shall inherit all things and I will be his God and he shall be my son. That's Revelation 21 verse seven. In addition to that beauty of that place, there is no pain, there is no death, there is no crying, no heartache, no separation from our friends and loved ones, no stress, no debt, no natural disasters, no wars, no suffering, no starvation, no heart attacks, no cancers, no pandemics. In short, all that trouble us here will not be found there. None of them has a part in the new land, but best of all, we will enjoy the companion of the companion of Jesus and his angels. It will be an atmosphere of peace, joy, love, understanding, growing and learning. All this and more are the promises of those who will be overcomers or are the promised inheritance of the overcomers. Jesus himself promised us what we are going to experience when we get to heaven. Revelation chapter two, verse seven says, to him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise. Okay. That means we will live forever. We'll be eating from tree of life. Revelation chapter two, verse 11, he who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death, there is no dying. You know, when you read that chapter, you will just see the promises. Even if you go as far as chapter three, you will just see those promises which Jesus has said. And it's Jesus who said them because when you read in your Bibles, you will see that those verses are all written in red, meaning those promises are the promises of Jesus, our savior. In the book, The Upward Look, by Ellen G. White, page 151, it reads, the glories that await the faithful overcomer are beyond any description. The Lord will, will greatly honor and exalt his faithful ones. They shall grow like cedar and the comprehension will be certainly increasing. And at every advanced stage of knowledge, their anticipation will fall far beyond the reality. Though it is impossible, though it is impossible for us to fully comprehend the beauty and glory of heaven, we can by faith at least partially visualize the rewards of the faithful. That's first John 4 verse 1 tells us that 
This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. So it is faith that enables us to look beyond the present with its burdens and cares to the great future where all that now perplexes us, all that now troubles us, all that now worries us shall be made plain. The expression used in the verses we read, uh, which Jesus has promised us, uh, those verses are the verses of promise. And in those verses, we see that there is a phrase that keeps on coming. He who overcomes. He who overcomes. Who is this one who overcomes? Who are the overcomers? What have they done to have that title, overcomers? The overcomers are you and me. People living in this sin-troubled world, people who are waiting for the second coming of Jesus or of our Lord. The word overcomer itself clearly indicates that there is something for us to overcome. One of the things we must overcome is self. We need to surrender, our, to surrender ourselves to God so that we may be emptied of self, emptied of envy, emptied of jealousy, emptied of every evil thoughts and everything that is dishonoring to God. All those things that are unlike Christ must be put aside or let go. There are people even in our church or even in the church of God today who promote sin by saying, I can't help it. I was born like that. I tell you church, that is not the way to deal with sin. The way to deal with sin is, to, is not to make excuses, but it is to overcome it by the power of God. Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. Surely our God can create a clean heart and a clean mind within us. Jesus promised his disciples the Holy Spirit as divine power to overcome sin and to, to impress his character upon us. The same harmonizing power is available for us today. As the disciples were brought together, each with different faults, so in our church relationships today, we find men and women whose characters are defective. Not one of us is perfect. We are not divine, but in Christ, and through Christ, we are to live as one family of God, learning to become one in faith, in doctrine, and in spirit, so that at last we may be received into eternal home in glory when Jesus comes. So how to become an overcomer? The Bible tells us about who overcame and how they overcame. And those people, they overcame through prayer. Not only prayer, but prayer and fasting. A story is told in Jonah chapter 3. A heathen king of Nineveh, when he heard that the whole city was going to be destroyed because of sin, he called for a prayer and fasting. Every young woman, every young, every young person and old person, both great and small, they were uh, asked to fast and to pray. Uh, in, in, in that chapter, chapter three, you will hear what this pre, the, the king said. He said, let neither man nor beast nor head nor flock test anything. Do not let them eat or drink water, but cry mightily to God. Wow, when I looked at it, I said, you can cause the livestock to fast. You can cause every living thing to, to fast because you want God to intervene. And you know, when he did this, their lives were spared. My brothers and sisters, 
when life situation has hit us hard, it is time to call for a prayer and fast. When life situation has hit us hard, it is not time to sit at our tables and eat a meal. Also in Esther chapter four, verse 15, when a declaration was um, announced uh, that um, all the Jews were to be wiped out from the kingdom of King Ahasuerus. What did they do? Esther here in Esther chapter four, verse 16, she says, go gather all the Jews who are present in Shushan and fast for me, neither eat nor drink for three days, night and day. My maids will fast likewise. And life was spared when they did that. And you know what? Sometimes we call for a fast and we struggle to finish the 24 hours in fast. We struggle to finish the 12 hour fast. We struggle to finish six hours. But when trouble comes, there will be need for us to fast. And then they, fast, they had to fast for three days, night and day, and God showed up. Another story in the Bible, King Jehoshaphat was threatened by some heathen king and all what he could do was to proclaim a prayer and fasting program. God answered in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 15. This is his answer. Do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but mine. You know, there are some battles that come into our lives and we fight them. When those battles are not ours, those battles are God's. God is the one who can fight our battles. Our only way of handling the battles is to present them before the Lord. So God is saying here, do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. Yes, the multitudes that are coming to you, they appear big, it's a, it's a big number, but do not be afraid. That battle, that battle is mine. So when we present our problems and fears before God, he will fight those battles for us. For us. He says, the battle is not yours, but it's mine. God wants us to have some time out with him in prayer and fasting where we can pour out our fears, where we can pour out even our joys, where we can pour out our sorrows, where we can ask him to overcome sin and to overcome these things of this world. Yes, God's power is available, but we must ask for it and God is readily available to supply it. The battles, they are not yours. The battles are God's. All those who overcame in Bible times were men and women of prayer. Go in the Bible and find everyone who overcame. They did not overcome by themselves. They did not go to a friend. They went to God when things were bad and God helped them. Well, there are a few points I feel can help us to be overcomers. First, make a decision or make it a point now that by faith you are determined to be an overcomer. You are determined to be a Christian here on earth and a Christian waiting to meet the Lord in heaven. Next point that can help us to overcome, make your preparation for heaven a matter of prayer. We need to pray that, Lord, we want to be seen in heaven. Perseverance in prayer has been a condition to receiving. If we persevere, we will receive. We pray, I think we have prayed or we pray for, for long times, and we have prayed for a long time, asking God for earthly blessings. 
We have prayed for days, we have prayed for months, we have prayed for years for a special blessing here on earth. But have we persevered in prayer in order to be granted eternal life? We need to pray always and daily seeking the Holy Spirit to feed us. Next point that may help us to be an overcomer. Open your heart to God. You know, the work of salvation is for you and me. Your salvation depends upon ourselves, yourself and myself. For it is up to us to accept the provision that has been made for us. God has done everything he could do for us to be saved and it's for us to make that decision that we want to be saved another point it says here take hold of god's love a quotation from signs of the times magazine uh, which was uh, in november 1983 says if a man by faith takes hold of the divine love of god he becomes a new creature through Christ. The world is overcome and Satan is vanquished just by love. Love can do great things and it will be love, divine love from God. Next point that can help us to be uh, an overcomer is be regular in your Bible study. You know, some people, they neglect Bible study. They don't want to study. Some people, they are even scared to, to, to hold a Bible study. And you know what? The creative energy that called the world where we live, that energy that called the world into existence, it was by the power of the word of God. This, power, this word has power. It has power to live. It has power to love. It has power to pray and power to conquer evil. So why not study your Bible for yourself and get this power, it's readily available. Next point, be prepared to fight. Yes, each one of us has a personal battle to fight. Each must win his or her own battles. Through struggles and discouragement, you know what, sometimes this applies to me, when struggles come, I complain. Possibly you complain too. And always say, why? Why me? Why this happening to me? You know what? If we decline to fight those battles, how can we declare victory over the fight we did not get into? And you say, I'm a victor when you did not fight. You need to fight those battles so that you can be a winner, so that you can be a victor, so that you can be an overcomer. Next point, trust in God. We need to put our trust in God, knowing that whatever he has promised, he will do it. God has never failed us. Whatever he promised, he will do it. And next point, practice temperance, you know? Practice temperance and by God's grace, gain control of yourself. There are things we like and enjoy doing in this life. Yet those things have nothing to do with the will of God and has nothing to do with our salvation. We must train, train ourselves to, uh, we must train ourselves to be, to part away with such things because they do us no good. Uh, the next point, pray for latter rain. You know what latter rain is? This is the Holy Spirit that God is going to place or to pour amongst his people in the last days so that they can be ready to meet the Lord. Whenever you hear the word latter rain, this is the power of the Holy Spirit in the last days. And the latter rain in God's, uh, the latter rain is God's Holy Spirit that manifests God's power upon his people in the last days of earth's history. This power will be seen only, 
only on those who asked for it, who receive it and who make use of it. So why don't you pray for the latter rain? Why don't we pray for the Holy Spirit to be poured upon us? Next point, we move on. Follow the example of Jesus. Why do we need to follow the example of Jesus? The answer is clear. He conquered. His example, if we follow it, we will be conquerors. How did Jesus live his life then here on earth? In Mark chapter 1, verse 35, we hear, I think in the story as well of the children's story, something like this happened. We hear now, now in the morning, having risen a long while before daylight, that was in the dark when he rose, he went out and departed to a solitary place. And there he prayed. Jesus showed us an example to follow. There is nothing that can stop us from having regular morning worship, whether we work during the day or whether we work during the night, because morning comes anyway. It comes every day. We need time to pour out our hearts to him. Jesus lived as our example. He willingly took himself upon himself human nature. He willingly did that to take human nature and became a Painted with our weakness because he had no power except to ask from God. He became acquainted with our weaknesses. He was tempted in all points as we are, but without sin. Our Redeemer perfectly understood the wants of humanity. So when you are tempted and ask God to help you overcome temptation, be assured that you are asking from, a, from our God who knows what it means to be tempted. He knows what it means to be tempted. Another thing Jesus did, Jesus conquered by depending on his father through prayer and fasting. That reminds me of a, uh, a, an incident that happened on Mark chapter 9 that tells us that at one point, he came from the mountain where he had an experience with his father, where he had the assurance of what he was doing, that he was on track, only to be met by faces of disciples, disappointed, disappointed disciples who could not help a young boy, a young boy who was lying on the ground, twitching and forming because he was made captive with the devil, Jesus commanded the evil spirit to come out of that boy and never to enter him again. The evil spirit left the, the boy with a shriek and he was made well. The disciples now asked, why couldn't we throw out that demon? What was Jesus' answer to the disciples? This kind, this kind can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. You know, what this text tells me, it tells me that there are some of the things in life that we cannot overcome unless we get to be a people of prayer and fasting. And we can overcome those things because it is coming from the devil. We know we are fighting with the devil here on earth. And we don't see the devil, but he comes in different ways, the ones you will never expect. And we can overcome them through prayer and fasting and having faith in God. Another thing which Jesus did, Jesus' obedience and submission were unreserved and perfect. While our master was here on earth, he suffered many trials that would have caused him to fall. But because of his obedience and submission to the father, he overcame. During the early days of his ministry, while praying and fasting in the desert, the devil visited him. The devil visited him when he was praying, when he was fasting and tried to tempt him so that he could fall. Oh, praise God. One of the temptations the devil brought says, 
all these things, all these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said, no time for that. He just said, away with you, Satan. For it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only you shall serve. That's what we must do. Don't serve anyone else. Don't worship anyone else. Worship God and serve him only. The devil will come with many things that he wants us to worship. The devil will come with many things that he wants us to save. But let's challenge him. We can only worship God and him only we shall save. Also, during the last days of his ministry, the devil followed Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. We saw him praying in the Garden of Gethsemane. So the devil followed him in the very last time or days of his life here on earth and tried to persuade him. And he said, uh, he would try to persuade him that it is not worth it for you as a creator to suffer like this. You better leave it and go back to heaven. But Jesus, Jesus prayed to his father. He did not challenge the devil. This time he prayed to his father and says, not my will, but thy will, O Lord. Not my will. You know, there are some things we want to do because we want them. Maybe it's a relief, but let's give it to God. Let God take control. And even at the cross, the devil followed Jesus and challenged him and said, if you are the son of God, take yourself down. Take yourself down from the cross. Save yourself. But you know what Jesus did? He did not respond to that. He said, Father, Unto thy hand I commit my spirit. And Jesus overcame. My brothers and sisters, Jesus did overcame. And he overcame by depending on his father through prayer. And that's what he expects, expects us to do. We can be overcomers. Who are the overcomers? We can be the overcomers if we want to be overcomers. Because an example was set for us by our Lord and master Jesus Christ, and he overcame. Well, Jesus came not to be ministered unto, but to minister to others. That's what he came for. Jesus had no place of fixed abode all his life. He was moving from place to place, helping people. He was doing the work of his father. Another thing I have seen here is, we need to, be, to get involved in the work of God. We need to be involved in God's work. The only way to grow in grace is to be interested in doing what God wants us to do, is to be interested in doing what God has told us to do and to do it to the best, to the best of our ability. Our prayer should be, help us, O oh Lord, to do the best we can. We must help and bless those who are in need. This is the Isaiah fast. I think last quarter uh, in this church, we were studying about the Isaiah fast from uh, verse four. I can summarize it a bit. God is saying here, what good is fasting? When you keep on fighting and quarreling, this kind of fasting will never get you anywhere with me. Is this the kind, is this what you call fasting? Do you really think this would please the Lord? No, this is the kind of fasting I want. God is telling us, share your food with the hungry and give shelter to the homeless. Give clothes to those who need them and do not hide from relatives who need your help, then your salvation will come like the dawn and your wounds will quickly heal. Your godliness will lead you forward and the glory of the Lord will protect you from behind. Then when you call, the Lord will answer, yes, I'm here, my daughter. Yes, I'm here, my son. He will quickly reply. This verse I read from New Living Translation. 
Well, my brothers and sisters, strength comes by exercise. I think we all know that. Ask those people who have big muscles or who have six pack, well, whatever it is, they will tell you how they came to be looking like that is through exercise. So by exercise, by exercising in doing God's work, we become strong in our Christian experiences. All these are possible if we allow Jesus' example to be ours. He said, pray, pray always. Today, you are to give yourself to God that he may make you a vessel mixed for him. A quotation from book, God's Amazing Grace, page 205 says, today you are to have your vessel purified that it may be ready for the heavenly dew, ready for showers of the latter rain. We said before that latter rain is the Holy Spirit of God, which will be poured upon his people in the last days. For the latter rain will come and the blessing of the Lord will fill every soul that is purified from defilement. Every soul that has no sin. It is our work today to give our souls to Christ that we may be fitted for the time when this Holy Spirit will be poured out without measure. Church of the living God. Probation is closing soon. What is probation? Probation is the time of mercy. The time of mercy will be closed soon. Satan knows that time is short. The Bible tells us that Satan knows that time is short. Not only does he know that time is short, he is also angry, very angry with the church of God. He says that the probation is almost ended. His strategy now for many is to keep us occupied with the cares of this life so that we do not pray, we do not read the Bible, we do not share, we do not say. If we are so occupied with the things of this world, we will be deceived and misled. Then the clause of probation will catch many of us unawares. Second Corinthians chapter six, verse two says, behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. There will be no future probation, no future time of mercy in which to prepare for eternity. It is in this life. It is today that we are to put on the robe of Christ's righteousness. That quotation comes from Christ object lesson, page 319. Our individual prayer should be, please God, help me. Help me to have that determination to be an overcomer. I can do this through Christ alone. Help me to experience his goodness and power that I may overcome as he overcame. True, we are facing a world that is almost totally hand given to Satan, but the day is coming when the battle will be fought, when the victory will be won. Then all the creation of God will be a happy, united family. All will be clothed in garments of praise and thanksgiving, which is the robe of Christ's righteousness. All nature and its beauty will be in constant praise. The world will be covered with light of heaven and years will move on, not in sadness, but in gladness. So let us pray that we grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Amen.